welcome back this is a level computer science 9618 and chapter 2 which is communication so in this video today we're going to cover all these topics uh, we, i'm going to divide this you know this whole chapter into three parts this is part one okay because it's a very huge syllabus this would be part two um from here and then this will be part three so let's start with part one let's start with uh, understanding and benefits of network and networking devices okay let's start with that so here we go what are the benefits of networking devices so it can share file and data it data and file can be backed up okay we can share it we can backed up user users can communicate through email and instant messaging access to reliability data comes from a central source such as file server okay so these are the benefits and coming to coming to a LAN van then we're going to study about client server and what is peer to peer model what are the benefit and drawbacks at the same time we're going to discuss about it then thin client and thick client then cloud computing their benefits and drawback and there are two types of cloud computing which is public cloud and private cloud so let's start with LAN and WAN okay we're going to go in sequence LAN what is LAN LAN is something that you know number of devices computers all together connected to a router this is LAN you can make LAN in a building inside, even even inside your own room. You know, you're sitting and you have so many cousins and they are connected to a router and they are playing video games, you know. So that is an example of LAN. Or you have computers and shared devices such as printers. Okay, interconnect computer with a limited area. Smaller network usually inside one building, connected to a number of computers and shared devices such as printer. This is LAN. And what is LAN? When? WAN is something that computer networks that extend over a large geographical area. It's a uh, it's something you know a uh, number of LANs connected together, which forms a WAN. Okay, so in order to make a LAN, we can either use a switch or a router. We can we can also use hub, but I do, uh, I will, uh, I don't think that hub it would be useful because it have so many security risk and you know it's very slow. Switch is much better than hub and router is much better than switch. So we can also use router for making a LAN. So LAN consists of a number of computers and devices connected to a switch or hub. We don't use hub normally. Now, now we most likely we use switches or router. Okay, one of the switches or hub connected to a router and or a modem modem is something that helps you to uh, connect to the internet okay so you whenever you need to connect to the internet you definitely need a router and a modem to allow yourself to connect to the internet but now i think sometimes uh, you could find such devices that router and modem are fused together to make a one you know a combination of router and modem as in a single device you can also have these things these devices okay so either router and modem or uh, router and modem okay or it could be possible that yeah. I think it would be best say router and modem okay you need a router and a modem to allow the LAN to connect to the internet or become part of the WAN okay WAN usually make use of a public communication networks obviously if number of WANs are connected together it will be known as the internet itself Okay, vans are usually make use of a public communication network such as telephone lines or satellites. All right, we can use telephone line or satellite, but uh, dedicated or least communication light lines can be used. You know, least communication line lines can also be used as they are less expensive. Then what we have here is client server model. client server model the client is a web browser connected to the network and the server is a web server hosted on the network the client is a web browser like for example if i'm browsing on the i'm opening my google chrome and i'm browsing and on a you know access it to any website that's me i'm a browser web browser i'm a client connected to the network and the server is a web server you know those people who make website you know there's a server which manage the website you know it hosted on the network the server is a web server hosted on the network. Client sends clients via all the clients send a request to the server, and the server finds the requested data and send it back to the client. Okay, most servers have one to many relationship. Of course, they can be uh, they can be many clients. You know, ten thousand users are accessing uh, accessing to a single website, meaning a single server can provide resources to a multiple client at the same time. Definitely. Now, what are the examples? The example we have, you know, file servers. 
you know, responsible for central storage. We are, you know, saving some. Uh, we are uploading files. We are, uh, you, we are taking as a central storage, you know, and the file server will manage those files, those data for us. Management of data files. Similarly, same thing as you know, Google Drive, so that the client can access those files. Allow the installation of a software onto a client's computer. There are so many software that we try to install. Uh, a web browser, a web server manages pages available from a website, obviously. A proxy server act as an intermediate. Okay, there are so many types of server: file server, web server, proxy server. We usually use proxy servers to try to access those websites which are blocked. You know, act as intermediate between the client and a web server. Okay, what are the disadvantages? If all the clients request data from a server, it may get overloaded. Okay, so many users are accessing to the same website, it might get overloaded, it might get slow. The cost to maintain the server is expensive. Obviously, the, it's obviously it could be you know uh, the cost is very high whenever we try to make our own website. We try to host the website, we try to purchase a domain. I mean, it took a lot of costing to maintain the server. We need to check all of those requirements. In case of the main server had to undergo failure, in case just in case, then the whole system, whole network will be disrupted. Okay, we need to prevent that. What are the advantages? There is a centralized uh, control, obviously, server help in administering the whole setup the whole setup and also accessing rights and allo allocating resources is done by servers okay giving giving some access rights rights to some certain users and allocating allo uh, allocating the resources okay making a backup of all the data in in easy as the data is stored on server okay the files can be better protected from the malware threats because the files are stored as on a, on one server which will be regularly scanned using appropriate antivirus software. Okay, that's the good news. So these are the advantage and disadvantage of a client server model. This is a client server model. Then what we have here is a peer-to-peer -peer model. Peer-to-peer -peer means, you know, so many users are connected to one another, but there's no central server. There's no, uh, you know, uh, like for example, uh, in a classroom, 50 students are connected to one another, and there's no teacher, so it's a peer-to-peer -peer model. Okay, we are sharing data to one another. It does not have a central server, Peer to peer, peer to be both suppliers and consumers. Okay, we can supply and sometimes we try to consume. Same thing in you know in a classroom. We try to supply, we try to give some information and sometimes we try to take some information. Each of the nodes, nodes means computer on the network can share the, its files with all other nodes and each of these nodes will have its own data, obviously. Peer to peer offers little data security. There is a security risk, there is no central security system there is no teacher in the classroom so definitely uh, it could be a problem to you know like for example if any uh, anything bad happened to the class i mean there's a fighting going on between two students and there's no one to control the situation so there's definitely we need a teacher to you know make sure that no one is fighting to one another and that everyone is in a disciplined manner or nobody has uh, having uh, illegal equipment or weapons like gun and smoking in the classroom so we need a centralized system and that could be only be found in client server model, but in peer to peer, there's a data security, little data, there's a data, data security risk, okay? Since there's no central security system. Why peer to peer model? Why do we use, where do we use it? The network of users is fairly small, okay? It's always uh, preferred, uh, you know, peer to peer model would be preferred, pr would be preferred uh, where, the, where the network is really small. There's no need for repose security. There's no need, there's no concern for security, okay? What are the advantages? Part of the file can be downloaded separately, okay? Part of the file can be downloaded separately. From one user, we get the part part one, and from the other user, we get a different part. You know, part of the file can be downloaded separately. The parts are available from more than one host. Okay. Failure of one node won't disrupt the rest of the system. That's an advantage. What are the disadvantages? More open to virus attack. There could be a high chance of virus. Illegal content def is easily available. Backup recovery is hard as it is not centralized. Uh, it's not centralized, actually, not centralized. Okay, can expose personal information through peer-to-peer -peer network activities. That's peer-to-peer -peer model. Then what we have here is thin client and thick client. What is thick client? Thick client is a, a client that cu that carries out at least some of the processing itself, which means that it does the, uh, you know a client sometimes doesn't need doesn't need to uh, completely depend on the internet. It can work offline. It can download some application from a server and run the application itself. There are so many applications, so many software that we try to install, and then we can work on it offline. We don't need the internet sometimes. Okay, there are so many examples. 
like for example adobe after effects adobe photoshop these, these are offline apps application we can just run it for ourselves or video games offline video games that we try to play so possibly download the application from the server and run the application itself you can run some of the features of the software even when not connected to the server capable of operating effectively online or offline you can store data on local resources such as HDD or SSD example a computer game which can run independently on a user's computer a computer game but can also connect to an online server to allow games to play and communicate with each other so this is what thick light is okay it's not completely dependent on the internet thin cloud is uh, that only provide input and receive output from the application it means that in other in another way it's completely dependent on the uh, internet I, yeah a client that only provide input and receive output from the application so a client can only provide input and can only receive output from the application uh, choose an application to run on the server we try to choose any application application that could run on the server instead of uh, you know storing data for ourselves uh, like for example um taking lo uh, can store data on local resources we can we cannot do in thin client sends input data to the server and when requested by the application okay receives output from the application always relies on a connection to a remote server or computer for it to work we need the internet we have we are completely dependent on the internet data is stored on a remote server or a computer okay it's completely stored on a server remote relies on a good stable fast network communication for it to work this is a thick line then what we have here is cloud computing what is a cloud computing cloud computing is a provision provision means act of providing or supplying something for use cloud computing you know there are so many examples like amazon e-commerce website google drive website that are, that are giving services or providing services to clients like us okay usually through the internet cloud computing is a provision provision means act of providing or supplying something for use of computer of computing services okay services usually through the internet we need the internet without we cannot get any access get any service the aspect of cloud computing are you know cloud storage google drive for example database networking okay software and an analytical services using the internet software application can be developed to a user's computer on demand using cloud computing services okay the cloud provider will both host and manage software application so inside a website they have uh, they have some you know software to uh, install and they will try to upgrade that software and will try to you know uh, it will manage the software application and you can invite, and it will also try to provide services through that software subscription like you know netflix is a, is a cloud computing service is a is, is, is example of cloud computing netflix any other website which, which are pro which are giving services on a subscription based you know so there are two types of cloud public cloud and private cloud public cloud means public cloud means uh, can be accessed by any individual user or by an organization owned by a cloud service provider for general use cloud service provider for general use giving services example accessible through a browser i mean we can use we can access the public cloud through a browser and therefore access accessible from any other suitable device in any in, in any location public cloud are you know like for example netflix and other uh, public cloud we can access it you know from any location in, in any device so this is the example of public cloud private cloud is something that is owned by a cloud service provider for a general access it's a private okay we cannot access it it's all uh, it's it's actually it's, it's from the uh, it's, it's just for private use you know not sharing cloud computing resources without any with any other organization customizable to meet the unique business and security needs of the organization so it's we can uh, it's all it's, it's always for the organization for itself you know what are the advantage of cloud computing it can have a backup of for data loss for example you know uh, in so uh, you know having a software inside a server and you know making a backup for it okay data can be easily shared through cloud computing yes you can definitely share data you can definitely do something yeah it's very speed high there's a high speed yes automatic software updates and our integration they will try to up upgrade the software and there will definitely integration development management everything efficiency and cost reduction instead of having our own software like like if I'm a user, I want I want a software that could do this or that, but I, I don't want to make so much effort into it, and it would be very costly for me. So I decided to make a subscription from any particular website. So you know, there's a cost reduction. You're just giving, uh, you know, a, a monthly payment, you know, and you, in return you you're taking the services. There's definitely high data security. Cloud com the cloud computer uh, the cloud computing uh, 
the cloud service provider will definitely focus on security because you know they are giving services and they are making money from it so they will definitely try to try their best to have a better data, data security what are the disadvantages the cloud service provider has complete access to all of the data privacy issues okay uh, you know there could be a chance of privacy issues because we are access we are giving the information to the cloud service provider has there has complete access to all of the data stored on the cloud the cloud service provider is being relied relied on to ensure data cannot be lost could face power loss who knows what will happen low internet connectivity we are dependent on the internet service maintenance okay sometimes there is service maintenance we need to